Hey there YouTube, it's Caddyat, and in today's video we are going to be using this wall behind me to build the most epic hole that you can possibly build in Minecraft trademarked. So without further ado, let's get into it. Step one, build the hole. And we're done. And just like that, we have a hole. You know, a hole that some might consider epic, so to say. It's almost like that's the title of the video. And yes, it's a hole because it is in an, it's in a wall or, or the ground, and in it protrudes inward. I think that is, is enough to define a hole, right? And, and let me explain now. What makes this hole epic? Well, you see, it has a bed. And <laughs> you can cook. And you have a barrel. Like, does viewer, viewer, does your barrel, does your barrel, no, does your hole have a barrel? I, I bet it doesn't. But mine does, and therefore my hole is epic, right? And I mean, I guess least importantly, you have the enchanting setup, but that doesn't make it epic, does it? Although, I will, I do want to take a moment, shout out these new chisel bookshelves that Mojang added in 1.20. Uh, they, they really help just texturize what would normally be a, a flat book wall. But now as a result, I mean, look at this. Look at all these books, and, and you know, best part... You can remove them, which is just... Oh. Um. Interesting. This wasn't part of the video. <laughs> now let me explain, okay? This video was never about building an epic hole. If you watched last year's epic hole video, it never was intended to be about a hole. It was intended to be about building a secret base. Get clickbaited, people, viewers, all two of you who are actually putting your time in to watch up to this point. Yeah, I know my retention rates. You'd be gone by now. Either way, uh, yeah, this is all about a secret base. This was never about the hole. The hole is just the mechanism to get us there. It's my clickbait. Just, just run with it. Now, uh, let me explain first, though. What is this door mechanism I just built? So if we're just going to hop over to a, a testing world real quick, and I'm going to show you what I've kind of built here. So now that we're in my door testing world, in front of us here we can see what is actually, you know, the design for the door I've implemented. Now, granted, I've, I've changed the form factor a bit and messed with how it was implemented, but generally it's just as simple. You hit the button and the door slides to the side and then you wait a bit because if you uh you know click too soon the the copper clock will not reset and then you'll screw everything up uh, i've learned that the hard way don't do that but yeah rather simple design you know hit button door close why is this special because i designed it no it's special because i don't think i've seen any internet designs or redstone doors that involve a uh, in and then slide mechanism. If there is, someone pointed out in the comments, uh, if you all want a more in-depth video on how this works, then uh, comment about that because I would be willing to if I get enough people asking. Now that we're back in the real world, let's go over. You know, we've made it this deep. We're one level deep, and, and one level deep security, it's just, it's not, it's not desirable. You know, if, if, if I can just, you know, waltz my way in this door here, and I'm in the secret base, then, I mean, all it would take is someone just happening to come over here and click the wrong book, and then all of a sudden, you know, they're in your secret base. No, 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 there's got to be a second level of security. I mean... You, who knows what you're going to hide in here? You could be hiding the nuclear launch codes. And if you're hiding nuclear launch codes in your secret base, then uh, I, I, there's probably something going on in your world that isn't vanilla, in which case you probably don't need any of this because I don't think that you can build a nuclear device in, in vanilla Minecraft. But um, uh, tangent ramble aside, yeah, we need another level of security. And so for this, we're going to build another door that's activated on some other principle that we can hide in this room. So to meet our second layer security standard, 
I have somewhere in this room now hidden a way out of this room that is not the door behind me. Because that's how we came in. There's got to be another way up. You know, how else are we going to get into the secret base? And I just, just off the bat, it is not the skulk sensors. That's to throw you off, because I mean, it, in my opinion, if I'm walking into a room and I'm hearing skulk sensors, my first thought is going to be, okay, somewhere in here I've just got to stand somewhere and it's going to, it's going to let me out. And, and I'm just going to wonder aimlessly and never figure out how to get out. When really the entire thing is just grabbing some item and throwing it right there. And then, bada bing, bada... One second. I said, bada bing, bada boom, you're up to the next level. Now, how does this work? It's rather simple redstone. It's bullshit I threw together in, like, hours, <laughs> hours of testing timing. I've got a little pulse extender here, and then I've got another path that basically, it's, it's all timed out. It, there's probably a more compact way to do this, but, you know, I'm tired, and this is what you all get for not subscribing. Subscribe, and it'll get better. That's not how it works. Anyway, now, if you wanted to get out, all you would do is press this button, you drop down, and boom, you're out. Okay. Next contraption. So at this point, I've come to the executive decision that two doors wasn't enough, two layers wasn't enough. So now we have a third layer of security controlled by a passcode, which the passcode is very inconveniently flipped to how a number pad would be because I am too lazy to fix my mistake when I wrote the code upside down. And I know what you're thinking. Why didn't you just call the code something different? Well, because the code is actually the block ID for this, which is 3512. Uh, at least that's the block ID. Oh, at least that's the block ID I find for Brown Wall Online. See, and just like that, it was never broken in the first place. So anyway, let's type in the code. Three, five, one, two. And just like that, we can walk right in. Now, to better explain how this works, we have a whole system in here. So each of these numbers is linked to a specific output. Um, starting over here at one, and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And all the ones that just aren't in use at all are all linked to these reset features here. So if I'm to go out here and I'm to start typing in the code, I'll let that close. I'm going to start typing in the code, first number of three. We'll see that this white wool block here jumped up. And now the next digit can pass through to the next part of portion of the sequence. So the next portion is, so it's three. So the next portion is five. As we can see, the next bit went up. And then one. And so now the final one pops into place. And then two. I said two should send the activation code. Did I? Yeah. Two sent the activation. Did I not close the door? Eh, oh well. Either way, you get the point. That's how it all works together. And then technically at this point, it's still locked in place. Uh, so, I mean. I guess you could always come back in and hit two again, and nothing's gonna happen. So, uh, didn't think about that, but you know, you can always just manually reset it by pressing one of the wrong keys intentionally. And so at this point we have this room here, and, and you know, what's the point of a vault if you don't have anything to put in it? So, we're gonna make some water elevators here, and we're gonna go to the final room of the vault with, you know, what actually ends up being our little secret base vault here. Oh, you know what? You can also close the doors from the inside. And you can open them from the inside. And, I mean, you can close them from the outside. 
yeah, cool, cool crud. It's just a simple flying machine. Uh, and it's totally also not copyright infringement. I don't know why this would ever be copyright infringement. This doesn't look like anything that is infringing on copyright. In no way am I ripping anything off with this. And in no way will I ever get reported for ripping anything off with this this door. I promise. It doesn't look like anything. You're just imagining it. I'm done gaslighting. So at this point, I finished the last contraption. It's just up the water, water elevator portion over here. But you may notice I'm in survival mode. And that's because... Just like the Romans used to do, they had this tradition to where their engineers would stand under the bridge when they placed the last stone in. Yeah, that's what I'm doing here. I'm so confident this is going to work without trying it that, you know, I'm just going to go in blind. And we're going to see how it happens, see how it works. Just It's going it's to work or it isn't. Go up here and see what was the point of your little secret base unless you have... A freaking TNT cannon prepare that you can just rain down on these poor, poor villagers who rawned you, and you put in the cage because they rawned you, and now they get to watch as they they get incinerated by by TNT. <laughs> so, load this darn cannon. That all of them? That's all of them. Okay, and then if I hit this button. Then hit this button. Hit this button. Oh, oh, 